we continue on with pressure forces moments on a submerged horizontally symmetric plate. We're first going to look at a problem of this type, which we discussed in our introduction. So what would be a typical problem? Determine the force and center of pressure on a rectangular wall of a tank filled with gasoline, SG 0.68, with total depth 3 meters and length of wall 10 meters. Now we might just be given this picture and we have to kind of decipher it. Or if it's an introductory lecture, we might be given a schematic. Here is a typical schematic. This is a side view of the tank. Here we see the liquid, which is gas. This is a side view of the wall, side view of the bottom. Where is the wall that we're going to be looking at? It's right here. We can see the depth of the tank. We could draw in at three meters but we cannot see the length of the wall. We have to imagine that the wall is coming out towards us. Why do people like this picture? With this schematic, we can visualize the pressures. We can see them starting at zero at the top and getting larger and larger in magnitude as we go down inside the liquid. So we can actually visualize the pressures here getting bigger and bigger. So this is one typical schematic. Another typical schematic is just to draw the wall itself. So this would be the wall. Now we cannot see the gas. Of course, we cannot draw these pressure lines, but we can see both the depth and the length of the wall. And we can put in L equal to three meters here and W equal to 10 meters here. And this is a good schematic when we go to calculate the force on the wall. Why? Remember that the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted by a fluid, here gas, at equilibrium. This is a static system, nothing's moving, due to the force of gravity. That's exactly these pressure lines that we see here. And the force on the wall means the net resultant force. What does that mean? It means we're going to ignore atmospheric pressure here and atmospheric pressure here. What's, what results is when we take away both atmospheric pressures, we just have the force on the wall. And it's the sum over the area of the wall, that's why we need this one, of the pressures. How much is this? Now, of course, the minute we hear the word sum, we know we're into integrals. The general integral is, of course, this one. The resultant force is the sum, that's integral, over A, the sum over the area of the wall, of the pressures times little pieces of area. But the pressures change according to the little pieces of area where we are. So let's put in a little piece of area here. And we're looking at the pressure at that little piece. And then we have to sum over this, both going this way and this way, all these little pieces. There's infinitesimally many pieces going this way and this way. So this is a double integral. Now, there's two good things about our problem here. The first is, this is a liquid. So when we substitute P equal to rho GH, rho is a constant and rho and G can come up in front of the integral and we're left with H here. So what we're looking at is H times this little piece of dA. So let's put in our H. We need to sum over the whole area how big H is times this little piece of area. Well, the second part that's really nice and that's why we're working horizontally symmetric plates is that you can see that H is the same along this whole part. And we can figure out how wide that is. In fact, for this rectangle, it's easy to figure out. So we can take away this DA, that's a piece that we have to sum both ways, and put in a piece that we only have to work on in one direction, in the vertical direction. Instead of little pieces and summing both this way and this way, we get these strips of DA whose width we can calculate from the shape of the plate and whose height is a differential DH, but we only need to sum in one direction, that is vertically. So we get a single integral. So the width is just W. So right now we have DA equals WDH. And the two-dimensional integral on A has been reduced to a one-dimensional integral on H. H equal to zero to h equal to l. So this double integral for a rectangle becomes this easy to calculate single integral. And in fact, for any horizontally symmetric shape, 
we can either find W and do the integral, or we can use what's called the centroid formula to find the resultant force. That's why we like horizontally symmetric plates.